So I'm Corey. And uh, I'm Justin. And so, so I write Ruby, and I'm interested in uh, JavaScript, but I want to apply the same sort of processes and level of craftsmanship to my JavaScript code that I do uh, with my Ruby code. Right. Um, and I had a hard time with that. I found it to not be a very easy process. Um, and so I talked to Justin, and we worked on some stuff. We started talking around this idea that, you know, in Ruby, we're really focused on craftsmanship. Um, and, and in JavaScript, you know, the equivalent is um, something else. And I'm fortunate enough to not really be going to turn me down maybe a little bit. Uh, I'm not really in the Rails community as much as I'd like to be. I'm working in a lot of other environments. Uh, but a year and a half ago, I had a client who needed some really complex JavaScript, and I was scared because I hated JavaScript. So I started testing it, and I started learning JavaScript, and I started liking it, and I started building really cool, complex things. So I'm just kind of here today to share some of the insights that I've learned, and, and hopefully we'll be able to help show you guys some actionable steps that you can take to start testing your JavaScript. But first, we want to talk about why people aren't testing their JavaScript. JavaScript. Why aren't you testing your JavaScript? Well, I'll tell you why I'm not testing mine. Uh, because I'm, I'm really, really good at like convincing myself uh, that these things are valid reasons, right? It's, it's a bunch of really weak rationalizations. Um, but I'm just the type of self-deceived individual who will buy into my own nonsense. Um, and so these, these are all things that, you know, I had a lot of conversations with people in this room today and other Rubyists that I know. One of them that, that hit home with me was the reason I hadn't been doing it until that project demanded I do was no one else expects me to do it. The craftsmanship community, I think, it, it, a lot of it's professionalism and peer pressure, you know, that, that, that drives us to figure out which practices are really important. And so, I, so if I submit Ruby code without a spec, right, I can pretty much expect a certain result, right? I'm going to submit a pull request and somebody's going to say, where's your spec? But if I submit a pull request for your JavaScript project and I don't have any test coverage, I'm so used to that now. I'll just look at it, I'll, I'll say thank you, I'll write some specs, and then I'll re-implement what you did for me. But I won't, yeah, and I don't I, expect it. I think that that's terrible, and you know we all know why, right? Craftsmanship is craftsmanship, code is code. We should apply the same level of diligence and care um, to every part of our system. Yeah, and so when we hear things like that, you know, TDD for JavaScript isn't worth it, or it's just glue code, um, it's disappointing because I think it has real consequences. Which are? Well, one of the conferences, uh, consequences, I think, is that the browser can do really cool things now, and JavaScript's the only language that runs there. So if you want to build a quality user experience, I think you just have to be able to grapple with JavaScript. You can't really run from it. Well, so what I usually do is, you know, I'll, I'll just push this logic somewhere else, right? I'll push this functionality into a controller or into a view or a helper, somewhere that it's easy to test. Uh, with our spec and like the rest of my Ruby app. Yeah. What's so What's so bad about that? Well, I think that um, you know uh, Chris Nelson wrote a blog post recently where he said that this is the late Cambrian age for server-side MVC frameworks, um, and I, I like that image because Rails solved a real special problem in 2005 where dynamic content wasn't easy to do, and now we're in a stage where dynamic interaction isn't really easy to do, and so I think applying the same uh, uh, practices that made us successful with our server-side code could really serve us well and get, offer us a competitive advantage, especially as a voice in the community, to start applying those same practices to our client-side craft. Man, why so serious? Why so serious, right? So Corey, I've seen application JSs, or I've heard tell of application JS files that look a little like this. You think that's fair? I thought I made this repo private. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that looks about right. Big ball of mud. Uh, Chris Powers would probably call it Tangled. Yeah, um, yeah. A lot of anonymous stuff, you know, code that we write. Yesterday, Anthony told us all the code we write is an API, but if it doesn't even have a name, I don't know if that's true. If you just have anonymous functions and event holding. Yeah, so, so, so naming your methods is usually step one to testing. It's like the, the API equivalent of NoSQL, like no API <laughs> hole. Holy smokes. Okay, so when you don't have tests. Yeah, one of, one of the things that I've, I've been taught, and I, you know, I, I embrace this, is that a ton of comments in your code is kind of like not the way to go. Um, when I try to apply that sort of line of reasoning to this, uh, we pull out all the comments, and I have a really, really tough time looking at that and like 
immediately intuiting what it does. Am, anybody else? Am I alone here? Is that like obvious and I'm missing it? Yeah, so if all the code in the code base looks like that, or if you're used to fighting with JavaScript, do you want to be doing it every day? Not that. Uh, so I'll just stick to the back end stuff then. I'll, I'll let, the, I'll let the, you know, the big brains like you like, work on the front end stuff, and the designy guys who are like, way smarter than me like, figure out how all this crap works. What, what, what's so bad about that? Yeah, and so may, maybe ultimately it's true. Maybe JavaScript isn't right for you. Um, but, but I think that at least giving it a shot, giving it the old college try, and trying to build enough experience to make an informed decision is, is really a commitment that we can all make. Um, this week there was a blog post that I think was very apt. Uh, blog post by Jay Fields, and in there I grabbed the most provocative looking quote I could find. Uh, I, I basically never pair. Well, so Jay Fields, I mean, he's pretty well regarded, right? He, he must know what he's talking about. Uh, so I guess it's safe for me to assume then pairing has no value, right? I don't, I don't need to do it. Is that well, that's my takeaway? Right? I may have taken it slightly out, out, out of context because he didn't you. really say that. He, he, he more said, I've got all this experience with pairing, and here's all the context of my current situation, and it's not necessarily really providing me a lot of return on investment right now. And here's some caveats, and I had Michael Feathers look at it first before I posted it. Well, that makes more sense. This makes more sense. Like, uh, but, you know, so saying I don't do JavaScript, uh, I should probably have that same sort of informed perspective, maybe? And, and I don't mind when I hear it as long as people have given it a shot and realize it's just not for them. Uh, but, but, but I used to say this a year and a half ago, and I can't believe how much I've learned since. And so show of hands, it. not including Justin, who has the context and the experience and has decided not to do JavaScript or not to test JavaScript? Anybody? Wow. Good on you. Wow. All right, cool. So I'm with you so far. Make some compelling points. So at this point, we just want to say, you know, no one raised their hand, so, so just please, you know, start testing your JavaScript before you quit testing your JavaScript. Cool. If Thank we you. can make that commitment. Thank you. All right, goodbye. <laughs> oh. Um, so, all right, so, so I'm gonna start testing my JavaScript, right? Maybe you're not crazy. Sure. Uh, but, but I tried, right? I tried, I tried a bunch of different Jasmine runners. Um, I tried a bunch of different you know, blog posts to do a setup, and it was fail after fail after fail, and it was painful, right? And, and especially when in Ruby world, I can just like now open up my gem file and say, you know, gem rspec and like get a great test stack, no effort. Uh, I looked all over the place and I couldn't find that. So, so let's, let's just make a quick pivot here with Dave Caruso and start talking about um, some real codes and just talk about first steps. Yeah! So first really? let's talk about RSpec. Nobody got that? I, I thought that that was like going to be the best thing that we had. I'm a, little, I'm a little disappointed. I'm sorry we've let you I'm down. I'm disappointed to you in crowd. Yeah. So show of hands, who knows RSpec? This better be everybody. Thank you. Sweet. We didn't ask whether you like RSpec or prefer it over anything else, but we're just talking about familiarity. Just look familiar? Yes, yes. We lost this guy over here, he's sleeping. Yeah. So, looks... so well, Corey, what, what if I told you that this was Jasmine? That looks like RSpec. Um, and, and actually, I mean, this, this looks really familiar. Yes, Congratulations, I everybody. All right, it was a good time. Hey, thank you very much, everybody. Oh. So, so, so it wouldn't, I think we should at least take a stab at that one problem that we saw of unnamed anonymous functions. But I know Jasmine. <laughs> so let's take a real world example of some real code of yours. Okay. And then just try to see what it would be look like, what it would look like if we wrote some specs for it. Can you please stop pulling examples from my crappy untested JavaScript code? <laughs> Sorry. Can you explain what this is trying to do for us, Corey? Yeah, I mean, it, it's two lines. It looks pretty simple, right? We're doing something, we're clicking, we're running some code. New task, uh, step three, profit. Yeah, so when I, when I see code like this, and, and I'm sure that a lot of you have seen jQuery, if you've worked with jQuery, event bindings that look a little like this. Yeah. Um, my Hi. question is, yeah. Well, what's the concern? What, what, what's the concern with this chunk of code? Uh, JavaScript. <laughs> UI, is it, right? is it the R -I -S. event binding? 
TLAs. Or is it that app behavior that's occurring right there? Or is it maybe like the gluing of that event and that behavior? So you can see there, there's, there's several things kind of going on at once, even though it's only a few lines. That gives me the uh-oh feeling. And when you, when you don't separate concerns. Is um, that Wayne? <laughs> so when you don't separate concerns, one thing that it seems like it can lead to in a lot of cases is stuff like this. Uh, yeah, so that one wasn't so bad, but I'm not a big fan of the neighbors here. That's ugly, right? I hope. OK. So, so how it, let's just start with that application behavior. If you didn't see what it does, it just looks at this and then gets a jQuery results object of it, and it adds a new div that says new task. Sounds easy enough. Sure. So let's look at a Jasmine spec of that code. Hey, that looks like our spec. Oh, we did that one. Um, pretty straightforward. We're adding a task. We have some setup. We have some behavior. We have some assertions. OK, I'm with you. Yeah, sweet. So, and, and one of the questions that I get right off the bat when I first start talking to people about testing their JavaScript is they'll say, well, how would I test that jQuery or that DOM interaction? And there's a lot of tools out there and helpers to Jasmine that can really help you do that. The one that we used here is called Jasmine jQuery, and you can use that URL to go find it. But it provides a lot of custom matchers that are really, really powerful. For instance, that container is a jQuery results object, so I, I get the matcher to contain, you know, and then a jQuery selector. And it'll go and, you know, verify that one is there. So you should have taken our JavaScript craftsmanship, Ruby craftsmanship, like, idea, and done that with Jasmine jQuery and RSpec Rails, right? Because it seems like they're doing similar things, just providing matchers. Right. So it's not that different. What else you got? Well, so that, so, so that spec drove out a, a new function that's named and more focused. Ooh. Yeah. I mean, this looks good to me, because I can tell what it does by looking at the name. Uh, and it's a one-line method where I come from, you know, that's smiles times. You know, this, this is good. We like this. I like this. Do you <laughs> like this? Well, it's not the whole story, Corey, right? The event binding is the hard part. But is there anybody at this point who wants to go back to the four-line method with all the crazy stuff going on? Because there's the door. A total straw man. That's no fair. OK. So we'll continue. Now, now no one, no one be scared of this one. Oh, oh my god. Uh, <laughs> describing some stuff, doing some setup, talking about behavior, triggering event handler, bind, prevent. That's kind of long. <laughs> I'll say. Dude, that is way scarier on this great big screen <laughs> than it was on your monitor. <laughs> Please don't hurt me. OK, so what can we do to fix this? So there's a lot of visual cruft to start off with, right? If you do a lot of nesting, you're typing the word function so fast that you can just hammer it out. Uh, lots of semicolons and curlies. I mean, that's how we roll in JavaScript land, right? You're supposed to have like function, function, function. Didn't we see that in an earlier slide? No, bad? OK. So well, what happens when we take this out? Yeah, so earlier today, it was mentioned that Rails 3.1 with the asset pipeline includes CoffeeScript support out of the box. And even if you don't choose to use CoffeeScript for your production code right away, for whatever reason, there's nothing stopping you from using it for your test code. So Jasmine, I think, looks a lot better, a lot cleaner. I mean, you can look at this and tell that we're talking about a clicker. You know, we're setting things up, and we're clicking a button, triggering our handler, binding to the result, preventing the default behavior. It's doing the same thing, but this is less long. I'll say, just a little bit. <laughs> so that spec drove out a more reusable function. And this one, we can just, you know, we called it clicker. You give it any jQuery selector, you give it any success callback, and it prevents default for you. It sets up the live handle. I think it's an improvement. So what we started with up there was we had, you know, all these combined concerns that was probably going to lead to some duplication. And it just became an easy little one-liner that's hopefully readable, maintainable. And if we change how we do our click event binding, you know, then uh, we only have to do it in one place. I like that. I like that a lot. What else you got? So let's talk about just like next steps. We don't have very much time left. Um, but, but there's, we'd be remiss if we just finished here and, and, and didn't point you in the direction of some new stuff to do. 
sink or swim Rubyists. Yeah. So, so um, I've been spending a lot of the last year, if you follow me on GitHub or anything, half of my repos are about little Jasmine toys and demos. Um, I, I built a little um, web app that lets you just try Jasmine out in your browser without any downloads or any setup uh, at, the, at this URL on Heroku. What does it look like? It looks a little like this. And so it's, it's hopefully not too threatening. You just type some specs in here and some source down here and hit the button or the keyboard shortcut to fill it up. Kind of looks familiar. Is that? Yeah, so, so it uses the, uh, the ace boxes here to draw out. Where else have I seen that? Yeah, so, so GitHub recently is using the same really, really slick editor with the syntax highlighting. And I was proud that I was there first. So that's. Take that, Tim Clem. <laughs> and that's all we have on Tim. <laughs> so what else can I do? I tried Jasmine. You got me. So now, how do I add it to my Rails project? Corey and I had trouble coming up with good slides at first, and so we just spent the day hacking on a Rails gem. Um, uh, Jasmine Rails is a real simple gem that wraps up a couple other tools we like. One of them is Jasmine Headless WebKit, uh, and the other one is uh, uh, the core Jasmine gem, just a new runner that respects the new asset pipeline so that you can use CoffeeScript. Asset pipeline and headless specs? Tell me more. Yeah, so you, you can run it headlessly with yeah. a real, you know, the, web, the Nokia WebKit widget. That looks like our spec. Or you can run it in your browsers, and this is especially helpful for, for debugging. And they both drive off the same Jasmine YAML config file, so, so they should be in sync. That looks like try Jasmine. So either way. Corey prefers it this way. Cool. I prefer it that way. Anything else? One last thing. So we actually, we, we were talking about this and wanted to give a little bit more of an in-depth thing because there's obviously a lot to go into here. There's DOM interactivity, there's callbacks, Ajax, there's so much stuff that we're not familiar with in Rubyland. Um, it's kind of unique to, to JavaScript and Jasmine. So what we wanted to do was get together with everybody who is either testing JavaScript or wants to test JavaScript. Um, let's all hang out, talk about what the issues are that we're having uh, and figure out how to work through them together so that we can all learn and grow and get way better at you know, improving the quality and the craftsmanship around our JavaScript code. And in addition to loving you so much, we made a gem. Um, we also have a coupon code, so definitely take advantage of that. It's in Denver, it's at Uncubed. See Jake if you don't know about that. Yeah, and even if you can't make it next week, especially if you're flying home, um, find, find either of us on Twitter, and we'll try our best to answer your question, help you with the gist, or kick it back up to DW Frank and the awesome guys at Pivotal Labs who made Jasmine for us. Um, so big thanks to them, especially because they're sponsoring today. And thank all of you for writing crappy JavaScript code and inspiring us to give this talk. <laughs>